Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. I've been asked a question, would I show how I cut the groove in the end of, the, of a hammer handle when I make it and how I make the wedge and how I put it in. What I have here is I have another old hammer head that I got out of garbage. And I mean there's nothing wrong with these heads when I find them. They're just people throw them away because the handle breaks. So I took my took a piece of hickory. I got a these pieces of hickory here. I bust them out of trees with an axe and a wedge. And I took this piece of hickory, one like this, and I took my draw knife and a uh, and a hatchet. I used a hatchet and a draw knife. Took the hatchet and chopped out the basic shape of the handle. And then I took a draw knife and I finished it out and then I sanded it down smooth so that the head of this hammer will go up in it and be pretty tight. What I've been asked is how about the groove in the end of it and then making the wedge. Now what I normally do is I'll take this, uh, let me get a pin out first. What I normally do is I'll set a head up here like this. And I mark about center ways of that head because that's about how far I want the wedge to go through it. And I'll take my pen and I'll find the center of that. And I usually will draw me a line. I'll draw me a black line right down the center here. Now I'll go a little bit further than the, than the middle of it just because. And then I'll come over here. And I'll draw me a line down the center of it. Of course, you can't see it on here too well because that's dark from being cut. But um, now that I have it marked, I come over to my bandsaw and I'll turn it on and cut this. That's how I cut my groove down the center of my handle. Okay, I have my slab of hickory here that I've busted out of a tree. And I, I'm going to try to go with the grain on it because I don't want to do a cross grain cut on a wedge. If you do a cross grain cut, then the wedge will just crumble when you try to drive it in a tree. But I'm going to go with the grain to cut this wedge out now. This wood is so hard that it's actually burning on the bandsaw. Because this is completely dried and seasoned for about a year now. And I'm hoping that the blade don't jump off the bandsaw when I do this. Okay, I've got my wedge cut out. Now I've got to figure the width of it here and mark it. Okay, so I know it's got to be that wide. Let me cut the width on it now. I can do this without... that's going to do is that's going to drive in the top of this hammer handle here. 
next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this is organic flaxseed oil. I take my rag, put a little bit on my rag. I go ahead and wipe it on my wedge because it's just as important that the wedge don't absorb any water as it is anything else. I wipe it down good. I take the head of this handle because once I put it on the hammer I won't be able to get back in there to it. That way when I drive it up in the head of this hammer I won't have to worry about it. Okay. I adjust my vise to where the hammer head handle will come through that and not hurt it. I want to make sure I get it in there good and tight. Which is what we've got. Then I'll take my wedge. Make sure that I've got it where it needs to be. I think I need to trim just a little bit more off the wedge because it's going to be a little bit tight. Okay, we're going to stick our wedge up here. I'm going to drive her in there until she is good and tight. And once I get that done, I'm going to come back with my bandsaw. I'm going to cut the head of it off and we'll drive it one more time. We've got it down in there now. And a lot of times, just to be sure, I'll take something like a nail, which is the same width as that wedge, and I'll lay that nail on there. And I'll drive it, and you notice it went down just a little bit more. So that tells me I need to maybe need to do it again. Okay, it's not going anymore now, so there we have it, the wedge and the end of the hammer. Now I'm going to take the flaxseed oil and I'm going to go ahead and finish oiling the rest of my hand. I'm going to have to buy me some more flaxseed oil, I'm just about out. Are there any other kinds of oil you can use? This is all I ever use. I, I like to use a food grade oil. Okay, this one here is a little hammer handle y'all saw me put in on the uh, video, a little tiny one. This was Wanda's dad's old hammer head that was, they were going to throw away and we brought it home. This is one I found in the garbage and this is a hickory handle. This is a red oak handle. So you can see the differences in the two of them, how they look there. For a small hammer, the oak was perfectly fine for that, but the old big hammer here, I decided to go with hickory because it's a lot harder and a lot stronger material. 
Now I have my scoby hoe. I finally got it finished up. Got the handle in it here. Got it all sanded down good and smooth. I'm going to, uh, as soon as I get me some more flaxseed oil, I'm going to be going on to take the head and bump it back down. I'm going to re-oil all this and then I'm going to oil the handle up on it good. But um, it's ready to go. Worked out perfect. Just the right, just the right length. You don't want to be bending over when you use it. You want to be standing up straight. So, um, so we've got this one done and the two hammer handles. What we've got here is this was an old Kaiser blade that was on a Kaiser and it got broke off. So I took it and I made this old candle here for it to go on it. Um, and I drilled a couple of holes in it, put me a carriage bolt in it, and I got to put another one. I just didn't have it. I got to go to town and get one. I got to take and sharpen it up. It ain't sharp no more. Things was laying out in a, in a field. I found it with a tractor when I was disking. And, uh, I figured I'd just bring it to the shop and make me something to cut weeds with here. I can take this. I can cut sugar cane down with it. I can cut weeds or bushes or whatever. Just take and sharpen this edge back up real good on it here. And I've got me another homemade tool for the homestead there. Kind of an assortment of handles that I've made. This handle here, somewhat a little bit different than them. Okay, what we got here, this is a piece of sassafras wood that I had, and I took a, I took my draw knife, I made me a boat paddle out of that thing. I thought that was pretty neat, because sassafras won't absorb water, it'll actually float, and it's very, very light, it doesn't weigh anything. Perfect for using when I'm going in a boat, you're just paddling along there. That's another one of my little homemade projects with a, with a draw knife here on the, on the homestead. If I drop it in the water, it just floats. It won't, you won't lose it. Okay, what I've got here is another paddle that I've made. This is out of sassafras. When we make gumbo here on the homestead, I've got these big old black pots like this with the... Okay, we've got these big old black kettles on the homestead here that we use when we make um, gumbo. And I've got this paddle here made out of sassafras. And what we do is this here is we just stick it over inside this pot here when we're stirring gumbo. It's another one of our projects on the homestead that we made out of some of our wood that we cut down on the property here and dried. 